picking back up where we left off. So I was talking about assessment and engagement and using cooperative learning strategies. So make sure that you're capturing those both as part of the instruction that you're giving. And a lot of times, as I said in the initial video, I'm going through and writing down steps as they make sense to me. And then as I'm moving along, I'm thinking, you know what, I've done three things and I really haven't stopped to assess student learning. So maybe in between that review of the SH sound, I've got students there circling words on a worksheet. Well, that is formative assessment. That's going to give me some data. Um, but what I haven't developed yet is using attached data sheet. So what my attached data sheet would be would be just a simple Google Sheet or an Excel sheet that has the words, it could be a Word document too, it has you know the words that I'm going to say with the SH sound and then my students' names across the top and then as students are circling words and I can just quickly on my data sheet you know mark incorrect words or you know if um, students have very few correct words yeah you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna mark um, whatever is the fastest for me to make some notes about that will give me some good data that I can use as I'm reteaching those skills or making decisions about the next thing I'm going to do in the lesson. You know, if I've got lots of students who have missed the SH words, then I might make the instructional decision here, um, back up plan if more than 50% miss um, 50% of words, so half my students miss 50% of words, uh, reteach the SH words um, doing a, whoops, a quick repeat of flashcard activity from yesterday's lesson or something. So I might go ahead and list what my backup plan is. This shows a teacher who is very well prepared to teach. If I already know, you know there's a possibility that students are going to need support here, so I'm going to already have a backup plan. So if every day in my phonics lessons we're doing some kind of a, a data sheet you know, that has the CH sounds, then I might always have that ready the next day as my backup. So if students are missing a lot of words, then we'll pull this sheet back out and go over it one more time. The same when I'm using you know, any kind of a textbook with instruction, I might go back to the prior lesson and say, hey, let's just revisit that really quickly. Let's read our word box for today, or let's look at this math concept from yesterday. Take a quick three minutes to reteach to get students back on the same page with you before you proceed with the current lesson. It's always a good idea to have that at hand and ready to go. So as you're detailing steps, know that I'm looking for that logical order of the beginning, I'm teaching and engaging students, I'm going to use some kind of technology, I'm cruising down here to where students are engaging in the learning, so they're doing something active with the learning. This is a great spot for cooperative groups, and as you'll recall, we looked at Kagan strategies, and we looked at some other cooperative learning activities that you can do. Um, but you definitely want students to be engaging actively in the learning because that's where that retention and proper storage for retrieval comes from, is students actively participating and then some form of an assessment. It's great to have choices for students. Yeah, if I'm running four centers here with, SA, with CH words, there's nothing to say that students have to go to every center. You can always write it up with student choice for moving through centers as long as every student comes to the teacher-led center. So if a student wanted to do a matching activity with the CH words multiple times to achieve higher mastery, you know, that would be okay as long as I have enough center materials. So you can kind of think that through, but you know, a large part of student choice um, and that power of learning might be doing one center more than once um, to make sure that they have the, enough time to complete an activity. 
All right, so I think I've given you a start here to keep yourself moving forward. The only part we didn't cover is watch for us, and I can do that quickly. In any lesson, what I'm going to watch for is mastery of the learning target, right? I want to make sure I can identify and read out loud, CH words, whatever your learning target is. You know, we definitely want students to master that learning target. We um, want students to engage with peers appropriately, follow class expectations, um, this might mean um, that you might want to spell out your behavior tar learning target as well as your academic learning target. There might be some more details. Um, they can read CH words independently. Or I will say in isolation and in sentences. You, so you can spell out some more details, but what are you watching for specifically? Um, are there specific behaviors you're looking to decrease? Is there something you're looking to increase? You know, I'm looking for three or four things that you're looking for in your lesson, and that can be part of those four look fors. Alrighty, somewhere in here, and I realize as I've gone through, I did not, and I'm going to go ahead and add back in here. The students have done their learning target. Now I say, let's review our group expectations. So this is the class procedures. And so I, I forgot that, so I want to make sure I do that. And then up here, our learning target, I actually have two because we all have a behavior learning target for each lesson, right? So I can read words of the CH sounds. I can work with my partner and share materials. Maybe that's my behavior learning target. So I want to make sure that I cover both of those. So know that this isn't a simple process that you, you write one step and you're done with this row and you write one step, but typically it involves going back and forth um, and reviewing and rewriting and adding to it. Yeah, I know that I've got some uh, supplementary aids and services and my SDI here, I forgot to add, and that's direct instruction. So I would, if I was you, up here we've got the blue things we're looking for. And as you go through and check those off the list, like we already added choices, then that's when I would delete this one. And then I would go back there and say, do I have technology? If the answer is yes, I'm just simply going to delete it. If the answer is Nope, oops, I forgot that. Then I'm going to go back in and add that as I go. So if you've got any questions, please shoot me an email. Otherwise, I hope that you're enjoying this process and feeling like you're really pulling together a lot of the things that you've been learning. Know that you're going to get really detailed feedback from me, so um, you will definitely have opportunities to add to your unit plan. But um, let me know if you've got questions. Otherwise, enjoy the learning.